This is a video response to Angie Random Stuff's video called To the Atheist. In it, she asks atheists to explain just what we do believe, and then she goes on to several related questions. As I explained in the comments on that video, there really is way too much to these questions to do them justice in a little 500 character comment. So I'm making this video instead. First off, Angie, thank you very much for the different approach. Usually when believers start asking atheists questions, they are allegations in disguise, and not a very good disguise at that. Why do you hate God? You just want to sin and get away with it, don't you? How long until the communist revolution? How bitter are you? I have to say that I find it a very refreshing change that you're addressing us just as people who don't believe that God exists, instead of people who believe that he doesn't. There are a few fundamental problems with the sense of the word atheist that you're using, but you managed to come much closer than most. So here goes. Hey, what's up YouTube? It's me, Angie, with another video, and I could just kill my husband right now. He got me sick. So yeah, that's why I'm looking bummed out in my little <laughs> pajamas. But anyway, um, this is a question to atheists. And before I even go on on this video, um, I'm not trying to be funny, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. And for what it's worth, I appreciate that or anything like that I just really want to know um, if y'all don't believe in God what do you believe in a good question after all you're not asking what beliefs atheism entails only what beliefs atheists hold this question though is still predicated on a few unwarranted assumptions which need addressing you see the root word of atheism is theism theism just means God belief in some way shape or form there are many forms of theism there is monotheism, which is belief in a single god like in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. But there's also polytheism, which is the belief in several gods like one finds in Hinduism and most forms of paganism. You know all this, I'm sure, but I'm bringing it up because it is relevant to the point I'm building to. The prefix a means absence or without. Asymmetry means absence of symmetry. In the wild, when an animal, plant, or what have you, reproduces without mating and exchanging gametes, this is called asexual reproduction because the animal in question reproduced without having sex. Once in a while, a believer accuses an atheist of amorality, that is, of living without morals. So clearly, given that asymmetry means absence of symmetry, asexuality means absence of sexuality, and amorality means absence of morality, it is perfectly reasonable to conclude that a just means absence. So given that A means absence and theism means God belief, it is only reasonable to, to conclude that atheism means absence of God belief. This being the case, the word atheist doesn't convey anything about the beliefs that one necessarily has, or for that matter, all the beliefs that one lacks, only one particular category of beliefs that one lacks. This said, there are a lot of beliefs that are very common among atheists, common enough that they are often mistaken for defining characteristics. As with any group of people, or for that matter any group of anything, there are defining characteristics and pervasive characteristics. All defining characteristics pervade, but not all pervasive characteristics define. I'll be getting into some of the more pervasive characteristics later. Do you believe that there is an afterlife? Not personally, and neither has any atheist I've discussed it with. Atheists are a very diverse group of people and that being the case, there are probably a few of us somewhere who believe in some kind of afterlife. But this group, it seems to me, would have to be very few and far between. If you ask me, the idea of an afterlife really doesn't make sense. I can understand how it would be an appealing notion, but nonetheless, it's nonsensical. An afterlife is, after all, a life after death. But death, by definition, is the end of life. So an afterlife would be a life after the end of life. Having life continue after it ends is a self-refuting notion. If life ends at that point, then it does not continue. If life continues at that point, then it does not end. Such is like having a ruler that is six inches long and eight inches long at the same time. It's like a square triangle, or a weekly opinions column that appears monthly. Now you will find that most of us don't believe in an afterlife, and what's more that most of us are glad we don't have any such belief. Consider a joke I heard on Conan O'Brien after the levees broke in New Orleans. 
He brought up an idea someone had had to provide temporary housing to the people displaced in their homes by anchoring a few cruise ships off the coast and housing them there. He joked because if there's one thing those people want to see, it's more water. Offer a bottle of water to someone on a ship miles out at sea, and another to someone in the middle of the Sahara. Who is going to appreciate it more? The one in the desert, of course. As I explained in your comments, consider the likes of gold, silver, and bronze. These are called precious metals. Consider diamonds and rubies. These are called precious stones. Why? What makes them precious? Their rarity. The fact that they exist in limited supply. These being valuable compels us to wish that each of them existed in unlimited supply. But of course, they are valuable precisely because they don't. Consider the words of H. L. Mencken. When I die, I shall be content to vanish into nothingness. No show, however good, could conceivably be good forever. I do not believe in immortality, and have no desire for it. Everything about human existence is limited. And this is where human existence gets its value. Is it really so far-fetched to suggest that it is the same way with life itself? If life does not end, if death, rather than being the end of life, is the beginning of a life that has no end, then why is death a tragedy? Why should the act of leaving this world be any more tragic than the act of leaving the womb? Regarding life as limited compels us to celebrate it all the more, and some of us get rather good at that. But on to your next question. Do you believe in the spiritual realm? Like as far as, um, uh, okay, you guys say you don't believe in a God. Well, you don't believe in a, in God. So do you guys believe in more than one gods? Indeed not. That would be polytheism. Atheists by definition don't have any beliefs in any gods. People who do are by definition not atheists. Or do you believe in, like, the Zeus factor? Like, what is That sounds like a Greek reality TV show. Like, what is that? Like, where they do, um, the Zodiac type of stuff? Do you believe in that? Ah, astrology. Again, given our diversity, probably a few here and there, but very few, and none that I've met, personally. Astrology doesn't really make sense either, if you ask me. The weird part is that I've actually encountered people who did not get defensive in response to my skepticism toward religion, but did with regard to my skepticism toward astrology. But if indeed our fortunes are written in the stars, then anyone who objects to my skepticism is well advised to take the matter up with them. What can I say? One day I opened my horoscope and it said, today you're going to stop buying this BS. And it was right. I suppose I can sort of understand astrology being given some credence back in the days when we saw the sky as this flat thing overhead, when we saw the stars as just lights in the sky. But it's different now. Today we know better. Today we know that the sky has depth. A great deal of depth. And given the means, we can travel into it and surround ourselves with it. Today we understand that, once one has gained enough altitude, altitude one is no longer traveling up and measuring one's distance above the ground, but out and measuring one's distance away from the Earth. Today we understand that, in the words of Carl Sagan, the Earth is a pale blue dot. Astrology regularly concerns itself with Mercury being in retrograde. How would this affect the horoscope of someone on Mercury at the time? Today we understand the idea of other planets orbiting other stars, from the surface of which one could look up and see the stars arranged quite differently. There are other problems with astrology, but I've digressed enough. Or do you just not believe that there's any type of spiritual activity that goes on in the world? like? For example, when we die, what do you think happens to us? Do you believe that there is an afterlife? Or do y'all just believe that we just, when we die, we just go in the dirt and that's that? If we go in the dirt. Personally, I plan to have my remains donated to science. The doctors may learn something from studying them that helps them save lives later. What happens to my remains after that, I don't care. Personally, I believe that when we die, that's that. We return to the state of non-existence from whence we came in the first place, and if we live on in any sense, it is only in the lives we touched while we had the chance. Of course, this is precisely why it is so vital 
to live this life while we've got it. This is why it's so important to do cool stuff and have adventures and have fun and seize on every opportunity to spend time and make memories with the people we care about. Those memories are ultimately all that we have, all that remains of us. So it falls to us to make them count. Um, also, I wanted to know, do you guys believe in demonic entities or, um, yeah, basically any supernatural type of things? Because I know, like, some people say that they don't believe in God, but really, I think they just don't believe in religion. I've heard of that sort of thing. Deists. I used to be one. Deism is a form of non-religious God belief. A deist believes in a god who defies comprehension and who is not involved in the unfolding events of the universe and therefore has no reason to worship him? Her? Yeah. Because I've had somebody say on, my, on one of my, uh, leave me a comment, saying that they didn't believe that, um, no, they said, let me just rephrase, let me see how they said it, worded it. They said, um, sorry guys, I just got a blank, my mind this one blank. They said that they believe in a higher power, but they don't believe in God. But that's kind of confusing because a higher power would be God, right? Indeed, I share your confusion at this particular choice of words. Maybe whoever it was who said this to you wanted to emphasize belief in a God of some sort, but a very vague, generic sort of God, instead of the one specified by this, that, or the other religion. I know that whenever people having a discussion with me start talking about belief in God, I immediately raise the question, which God are you referring to? Since, after all, the word God has had, no exaggeration, thousands of distinctly different meanings across the millennia. Since the person in question is speaking in the singular, I infer that he or she is referring to just one of them, to the exclusion of all the rest. If we are to be fair about this, we must recognize that none of the rest are any less likely. Osiris? No. Orgelmir? No. Mithras? No. Ishtar? No. Iris? No. Chak? No. Devlin? No. Minerva? No. Rama? No. Volturnus? No. Chenghuan? No. Caridwin? Artemis? No. Baal? Atlas? Chemosh? No. Loki? Poseidon? Zirona? Oderi? Dionysus? No. Yahweh? No. Yahweh? No. Atheist. So what I really think they feel is that they don't believe in the Bible. Would it surprise you if I were to say that most people don't believe in the Bible? It's true, even most Christians. No doubt you are compelled to disagree, and that's fine, but hear me out. You see, most Christians emphatically swear left and right that the Bible is absolutely true beyond any doubt. But the overwhelming majority of Christians really can't possibly believe in what the Bible says because they don't know what the Bible says. They have no idea. Sure, they know the parts that have been cherry-picked by their Sunday school teachers, but they've never bothered to investigate it themselves. Most Christians know about Lot, his wife, and his daughters fleeing Sodom and Gomorrah in order to escape the destruction, and while they're running, Lot's wife looks back and gets turned into a pillar of salt. But curiously, this is where the Sunday school account ends. So what happens next? Lot's daughters take turns getting him drunk, don't ask me where they got the liquor, and having their way with him. And he's so drunk, he doesn't even remember it. And then each daughter turns up pregnant. Most Christians have no idea. Most Christians will swear on granting the Ten Commandments some kind of veneration. But which listing of the Ten Commandments? There are three. One in Exodus 20, one in Exodus 34, and one in Deuteronomy 5. And the three listings don't match. Most Christians will agree completely with the claim that Christ is God, as well as the claim that Christ is also the Son of God. But when confronted with the notion that this implies that God is simultaneously his own father and his own son, they pause. Most Christians also have no trouble accepting the suggestion that praying is talking to God. But if you ask them if this means that Christ praying is God talking to himself, they take issue. But alas, I have digressed again or they don't believe in religion, but they do believe that there is a higher power. So that's just another word for God, right? Or do y'all just believe that there is no type of creator? 
just wondering let me know what y'all think how y'all feel on the matter of God spiritual realm demonic entities ghosts um, the zodiac because I would love to hear what y'all have to tell me because I'm very curious to see what y'all believe in and I know all atheists are different and they all believe in different things so um, I just want to hear your point of view and you know I respect the fact that you guys are atheists I'm not trying to convert you into believing in God or none of that I respect your your belief and I don't judge y'all for your beliefs uh, I'm gonna believe in God no matter what nobody can talk me out of that but I just want to hear your guys's side and like what y'all think and all that so this is for this is an adult conversation for adult people who don't get offended easy easy and just want to voice their opinion on the situation okay and I would love to hear your responses alrighty I will talk to y'all later your question is what we do believe I'm afraid there can be no simple answer to this question the only characteristic all atheists necessarily have in common is a lack of God belief the beliefs any particular atheist happens to hold, or any particular person for that matter, are way too numerous to sum up in a single conversation, or indeed probably in a single week. For example, you probably believe that the world is round. I'm not suggesting otherwise, I share the belief. But nonetheless, such is a belief. A thing believed. Not merely a belief, but a belief just the same. You also probably believe that electricity is incredibly useful. Again, same here. Although a thing believed is not necessarily known, a thing known is necessarily believed. It is both known and believed that flipping the switch on the wall, thus completing the electrical circuit, turns on the lights. It is known because it can be demonstrated, but it is also believed because it is known. One does not necessarily know everything that one believes, but one believes everything that one knows. I believe and know that sand is usually tan. But I cannot know that what I experience as tan, you do as well. I believe, but do not know, because I cannot demonstrate, that life exists on other planets. After all, the elements of life as we know it, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen, are the most common in all the universe. Thus, I have good grounds to conclude that the existence of life elsewhere in the cosmos is probable, but I cannot demonstrate it, and therefore do not have adequate grounds to call it knowledge. I believe, but do not know, that other universes exist. After all, we once believed that our planet was the only planet, and then that our solar system was the only solar system. We once believed that our galaxy was the only galaxy. Every time we have believed that our whatever is the only one, we have turned out to be mistaken. I feel compelled to learn from the mistake. But let me see if I can get into some fundamental philosophical territory shared by most atheists. Most atheists will agree that what one believes is less important than how one goes about figuring out whether a certain claim is worth believing. Borrowing the words of the philosopher, there is reality as it actually exists, the noumenon, and reality as best we understand it, the phenomenon. Human beings, being finite in every way, unavoidably have limits to our understanding. Also being intrinsically imperfect, we likewise unavoidably have errors in our understanding. Thus, there will always be a difference between phenomenal reality and noumenal reality. This might seem to suggest that there is no point in trying to expand the limits of our understanding or correct the errors in it, since, after all, such an undertaking can never be completed. But goals which can be met are not the only ones worth striving for. Each time we find a way to expand this limit or correct one of these errors, be it ever, be it ever so slight, the phenomenon is improved and we benefit. We don't know everything about everything. We don't know everything about anything, and we never will. We don't know everything about, say, disease. But each time we learn something new, the human situation improves. Lives are saved, which otherwise would not be. The standard of living is raised. People who would otherwise struggle for years or even decades with chronic health problems instead get to live a healthy, able-bodied life. Thus, one is empowered by remaining willing to change one's conclusions, but not for just any old reason. 
It is often pointed out to me that since my understanding of the universe is limited, my conclusions regarding this, that, or the other religion, or this, that, or the other god, could be in error. I admit this freely. The problem is that this is usually offered as a reason to change my position. But of course, the exact same criticism could be made of any position. If I were to give up any given position, just because the possibility could exist that it might be an error, maybe, perhaps, changing positions would be all I would ever do. Clearly, as a matter of practical necessity, I must insist on different criteria. If you want me to change my position, you have to do more than insinuate that one could suggest that it could be inferred, that the possibility could exist, that my current position might possibly be in error, perhaps. You have to show me that this position is in error, otherwise forget it. Now consider these two statements, 2 plus 2 equals x, and 2 plus 2 equals y. In order for these statements to both be true, x and y must both equal 4, which means they must likewise equal one another. Reality is internally consistent, which means the two statements cannot possibly both be true if they conflict in some way. Now observe that every single claim in the world conflicts with at least one other claim, when the claim in question says anything other than a whole lot of nothing. Most conflict with several. I can only conclude that most of the claims in the world are not true, which means that if some random claim just falls in my lap, it is much more likely false than true. So yes, when presented with some random claim and asked if I believe it, I am more often going to answer in the negative. This is only to be expected. This being the case, it is only reasonable that I limit myself to claims that both lend themselves to scrutiny and then hold up under it. None of us can ever hope for a perfect, complete understanding of noumenal reality. The best any of us can hope for is an understanding tomorrow that is better than the one we have today. This being the case, most atheists, the vast majority, believe in working continuously to expand and improve our understanding of reality by following reason to whatever conclusions it leads. Sometimes these conclusions are unpleasant. Sometimes they are unsettling. Sometimes they are even painful. But nonetheless, we accept them, because to do otherwise is to deliberately turn one's back on reason.